You could say Kevin Saunders and the Gretna Hawks have a little important football game this Saturday. It's only the state championship. Goochland will be the opponent in Salem. Kickoff around 4, 4.30 has Goochland and Gretna will meet for the fourth time in the playoffs since the new millennium. Kevin Saunders, head coach of the Hawks, joined me on the Sports Buffet podcast. We broke down the game, talked a little more about the Amelia win and more. It's Kevin Saunders on the Sports Buffet podcast. Kevin Saunders, head coach of the Gretna Hawks, joins me on the Sports Buffet podcast. Hawks, moving on to the state finals after last week's win against Amelia. Coach, we talked after the game last week, but let's just kind of touch on it again real quick. Uh, you know, first half I thought was a very even played first half, then second half. I think you guys just methodically kind of wore them down offensively. How did you see it? Well, I thought so, too. I thought uh, as the game went on, we got better as the game went on. And uh, we took their two scores and uh, didn't lose composure and didn't fall apart and didn't lose uh, the focus of the game plan, which we thought if we could get the ball game in the fourth quarter and uh, have a chance, I thought we could pull it out. So, uh they're an awful good football team, very well coached, and our kids just responded, played really well, and uh, you know we had a chance to win there at the end, and we did. For the first time seeing you guys this year, I got to be honest with you, I was really, really impressed with the defense. I mean, it's not like the old days, you know, where Gretna might win fifty to forty-five. I mean, it seems like a you know twenty thirteen twenty twelve game is uh it's fine with you guys. Talk about the uh, defense and their attitude at the half. Well, uh, I've been a defensive guy my whole coaching career, so, you know, that's what I coach, and that's what I stress. And our kids are now, this is the third year that they've been playing this defense. And even though we had to replace a lot of kids from the last couple of years' teams, they understand what we do on defense really well, and they understand their checks and their, what they're supposed to do on defense. Uh, and they've played it really well all year very solid with it. Uh, we're not real flashy on defense. We're just really solid and the kids play well as a unit. At halftime, we come in there and, and uh, scoring right before half was big. Cut the score to 12-7. to seven. And I thought our offense, you know, for the most part, can move the ball a little bit, but not consistently. Amelia had a great defense also, really big up front, which was a bad matchup for us. And uh, we thought the second half uh, to get the ball in the flat, short passes to get the ball to Tony and some of our other receivers, which we did, and they did a really good job with it. Dion did a good job running the offense. And, and you know, my coaches made great adjustments. The, half, the offense guys did a great job. Cole and Jake and Casey did a great job there at halftime of changing some things that we did and uh, paid off. I thought there was only one play that they really, really, really hurt you on, and that's that big pass play that went for about 50, 60 yards and a score. What happened there defensively? Uh, we were man coverage, and uh, Tony had just was a little tired, to tell you the truth. That was Tony's man, Tony Miller's man, and uh, he was supposed to get a little bit of help from Mormon right there because we had no safety in the middle field or straight man, zero coverage, no safety help, no nothing. Uh, Tony didn't get a real good collision on him off the ball and allowed an inside release, which you're never supposed to do on man coverage, and he did, and uh they hit a good pass, and they scored right there. And uh, I thought at halftime uh, we'd taken their best shots and survived, and I felt like uh, defensively we were getting better as the game was going on. You know, every week we've talked, we've always talked about how the kicking game has been a strength. Uh, last week, I don't think the kicking game was as strong as you wanted it to be. I mean, is that just a simple snap and hold thing, or what was, what was uh, it? The kicker just missed it. Mm-hmm. The kicker just missed the extra point. He just flat out missed it. He didn't kick the ball very good. The hold was fine, and the extra snap was fine. Uh, I mean, he drilled the others before that, and uh, he just whipped on that extra point. He just missed it. And he missed hit some kickoffs. You know, that happens with a sophomore. I mean, he's only a sophomore, and he knows only is whatever. Do you think it was nerves or kicking in the day? Because, I mean, you know, you guys are more used uh, to kicking at night. Yeah, I don't know what it was because mm-hmm. he's usually really solid and really, uh, really solid. And uh, Saturday, he just had a bad day. I mean, uh, he just had a really bad day. But you know, he's uh, young enough to get better at it, and he will. Before we talk about Guccio and one other thing, I want to hit on. I think I got there maybe an hour, hour fifteen before the game. And I mean, you're sitting out joking, you know, really keeping a loose atmosphere. How important is it? 
that you stayed loose to show the kids, hey, head coach is loose. No sense in you guys getting tight either. Yeah, we want them to keep it loose. I used to be one of them really uptight guys and all that. And I find out the kids play better with, you know, they focus really good. Now, my guys are focused on the game and stuff. But they're, they're relaxed and they're listening to their music and, you know, they're talking and it's a pretty, you know, it's a pretty decent atmosphere for me. You know, I don't want this to be a job for them. I mean, this is supposed to be fun. It's high school football and it's supposed to be a fun and, and great time for them. And, you know, part of being in the locker room around your friends is, is part of football and it's supposed to be fun for them. So I've really changed on that over the years. So Pretty fun, too, when you get to play in the last game of the season that can possibly be played. It's at Salem Stadium. It's against... Goochland on Saturday afternoon. What worries you about the Bulldogs? Everything. They're a really good football team. They're great on defense. Three tremendous linebackers. Uh, their kicking game is by far better than most teams in the state at any level. they got a punter going to Purdue and a kicker going to Vanderbilt. Um, that, that's, that scares me a little bit. And, uh, you know, we just got to play, and we're going to go down there and play loose like we've been doing. And, you know, we're the only team in other than Phoebus, I think, is back in the state championship game again for the second consecutive year. So um says a lot about our football program and its community, and, and especially these kids. I don't think anybody but this team would make it back to state, considering the bracket that we were in to start off with, having to beat John Battle, uh, Giles, Riverhead, and then Amelia to get to the state championship game. I mean, uh, we had a lot of kids for a place. And we got better as the year went on, and the kids did it. You know, it's just a tribute to the kids and the coaches. They just did a great job fitting in what these kids could do, and we asked them to do what we did a great job. I thought coaches did a great job of coaching and, and finding things that we're good at, and we just do those things. I mean, I think that's what you got to adapt to your personnel, and I think we've done that. Well, I would add beating Giles and Riverheads, not only beating them, but beating them on the road, which a lot of people don't do uh you know another thing you talked about how good the goochland special teams game is in terms of their kicker being so good and their punter being so good does that put more pressure on your defense to keep them you know if you let somebody to the 15 every now and again some teams have a big problem hitting the 32 yard field goal this sounds like it might not be as much of a problem and with the punter if he punts so good you know, your special teams either A, needs to cover it real well, block it, you know, or have a good return. How much pressure do you see on those two groups that I just highlighted? Well, we've talked about it all week, gone over what we're going to do, and, you know, you know Goochland's got to execute also. So uh, we're not putting any pressure on our kids about it. Just got to make plays. You get to this point of the year, and, and the kids just have to make plays. And we're going to put them in a position, the best position that we possibly can for them to make plays. We haven't really talked about their offense at length. I know when they played Amelia, it was a very low-scoring game. I want to say they had 10, maybe 13 at the absolute most. But uh, offensively, off, well, eight, even even better. Offensively, what worries you about Goochland uh, specifically? Uh, they're a run football team. They're a wing T team, and uh, they run it really well. Joey does a good job with it. Uh, the good thing is we've seen it quite a bit here in the playoffs. And, uh, each wing T team is a little different than the other, but uh, our kids have a little bit of an idea what to expect, which I think is positive for us. And, you know, our, if our defense plays well, which I, I would think they would, uh, then we should keep it in manage more where, you know, if we can get a chance to win, I think we got a chance. Before we get the keys of the game, last thing I want to hit on uh, real quick, for people who may not have seen Goochland, and I'm not trying to put you in a – in a bad boat to where you're going to get any bulletin board material, but whose who's speed, who's speed is theirs comparable to that maybe you guys have played or that people around here would know? Well, their backs remind me of the kids at Riverheads, and I thought the kids at Riverheads ran really well. Uh, their kids are fast. They're fast, but uh, big fullback, he's been hurt, and he's back, and then kid that they had replaced him reminds me of a of a big version of, of a, you know, he, and their offense fullback is their main ball carrier. And he reminds me of a big kid at Riverheads who ran really well. Uh, if, if you compare them to anybody, it'd be mostly like Riverheads. Uh, they block different than Riverheads. And their passing game is a, little, a lot better than Riverheads. And, and they do some things a little bit better, but their backs are similar. Uh, run really hard, and they're not very slow. They're fast, and I thought Riverheads kids were pretty fast. 
Coach, as always, appreciate the time. Final thing, uh, offense, defense, special teams, one area of each that you guys have to execute to uh, get a state championship back to uh, Gretna. Well, we got it once again. We can't have mistakes in any of the three phases of the game. And, you know, that's what you got to cut down this time of year. And uh, can't have any turnovers in the kicking game or on offense. You know, I think if we don't turn the ball over, we're pretty hard to beat. So I think if, uh, you know, in the kicking game, we got to have a big play in the kicking game and we can't give up astronomical amounts of field position to them. Uh, so they're used to playing on a shorter field because they can put the field on you very quick. And uh, we don't want to do that. We want to be make sure that we can get the ball and uh, keep the field position in our favor. Uh, defensively, we just got to create turnovers and tackle, limit their big plays, and uh, just play our football game. And offensively, we just got to get the ball in space, run the football with efficiency like we've been doing, and just create some plays. And if we do that, then we're going to have a chance to win. Coach, all year long, definitely have loved talking to you. Uh, best of luck against Goochel, and we'll talk uh, very soon. All right, thanks a lot. Kevin Saunders on the Sports Buffet.